Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to NPTEL the national program on technology enhanced learning this is an initiative by the Indian Institutes of Technology and the Indian Institute of Science. As you are aware, we are in a series of lectures collectively uh, entitled Cultural Studies. Uh, we have already completed three modules and part of module 4, which is our last module. And today we are in lecture 6 of the last module which is entitled Science, Technology and Cultural Studies. As always, let us do a recap of what we did in the last lecture. The last few lectures you would remember uh, were devoted to largely to media, to cultural forms, to cultural industry, to uh, television. Okay? Today we are going to go into um, another dimension uh, or another area in within this module. But let us do a recap of new media which was our topic of discussion in the last lecture. And we saw in the lecture on new media, we saw after Lev Manovich in his book The Language of New Media, that new media may be differentiated from uh, the so called older media by one important fact and A that is new media are the cultural objects which use digital computer technology for distribution and exhibition meaning it should not be only for storage purposes. Okay? Even old media use uh, such technology for purposes of storing data, but there should be an exhibition or using digital computer technology and also important importantly there has to be an element of interactiveness that is allowed by the new media. Then we also we found that some of these interactive communication forms okay, uh, include among other things uh, the blogs that you read, the podcasts, the social network sites which are very popular, the RSS feeds that you receive the wikis and the hypertext where we know that hypertext is how is it inter interactive it is interactive because it allows you to comment okay and annotate um, an already existing original text and so what are what are the things that are or forms that are not included in the new media those forms media forms that are not included in the new media are television programs look at this slide please television uh, programs, feature films, magazines, books and the important point here being that computing for production and storage are used all right, but not for final di distribution. Then we also found that mass media and new media may be uh, termed or may be described also from the point of view of the nature of their industry and this, uh, these are this that mass media is to do with modern industry, with standardized uh, goods, homogeneous consumers, right? Um, which was, which has, as we found in the last few lectures, devoted to media, media forms, cultural industry, which have received a good amount of critique from scholars. The new media is to do with postmodern industry, where we have segmented goods and segmented audiences instead of homogeneous goods and audiences. This also gives rise as we saw in the last lecture to new modes of production and new regimes of work. Fine, so I hope this brief recap, um, you know, by in fact by new uh, media we have already touched upon some of the things that are going to come up in our next few lectures which is, uh, you know, science and technology, uh, cyber culture, etc. Okay? So, we are well within, you know, the new media is really sort of bridging the gap between old media and science and technology. So, this lecture is entitled Science, Technology and Cultural Studies. Many of you uh, may be aware of STS which is Science, Technology and 
you know, uh, so, uh, and society that is the sociological um, exploration of science and technology also as many called techno science. Okay. So, uh, what are we doing here? Are we simply repeating what STS tells us or social studies or uh, of science and technology tell us? We are not exactly doing this and as we saw with other forms of uh, you know culture and media um, and other domains you will find that also here also we are trying to really uh, carve out a niche for cultural studies and to show you the difference between a cultural studies exploration of science and technology and uh, an STS uh, exploration of science and technology. So, the, uh, as always let us uh, declare the key source text in this lecture. There are many books of course, that we can use when we talk about science, technology and culture right or even science, technology and society, but for the purposes of this lecture I shall be bringing in essays on science, technology and society and culture which are included for instance in Toby Miller's edited volume A Companion to Cultural Studies and Simon Deering's Cultural Studies Reader. Fine. So, before we move into uh, the cultural analysis okay, of science and technology, very briefly let us talk about a domain with which we happen to contrast it that is STS or, the, or science, technology and society. STS has as its objective of course, science and technology, its method is an empirical one okay, where there is an investigation of the practices, workings and materialities of science and technology. For instance, um, you know uh, laboratory life for instance by Bruno Latour is one uh, seminal book in this as in this domain as uh, also so many other books that he has written. We are looking at the practices done by uh, you know uh, carried out by scientists in their laboratory. We are trying to look at uh, the laboratory not as a neutral place, we are trying to look at the laboratory as a cultural space okay, and the meanings that emanate the methods that are used are put into scrutiny and many say as point number 3 many say that the methodology is quite akin to an ethnographic one. Okay. Now, why did we require uh, social studies of uh, you know um, or uh, of, of science and technology or STS or now today contemporary cultural studies of science and technology. Now, this was largely as a reaction to a school of thought okay, or a movement so to speak in science and technology which was known as positivism. Okay. So, let us look first at what this movement was against which we find a scrutiny okay, um, uh, an imperative in scholars to scrutinize okay, the workings of scientists, to scrutinize um, you know uh, the philosophy of so, you know the philosophy of science helps us to scrutinize these things. So, first we are going to therefore, look at positivism as a school. Now, as a movement positivism looks at science you know as distinct from other areas of human creativity. Science under positivism is something that is uh, you know sacrosanct right, the activities of scientists are, are sacrosanct activities after all why because they are supposed to give us quote unquote the truth right. So, science was therefore, demarcated as a distinct uh, or an activity distinct from other areas of human creativity. This also meant that perhaps we could not receive apart from religion maybe you know in uh, particularly in the 19th century and in some cases even today science was seen as the domain that could give us truths right and hence the word positive okay, positivistic. Second they also saw science as having a methodical uh, uniqueness a methodological unique, uniqueness sorry. So, this methodological uniqueness you know was seen to be something that only science had okay, it was sort of the you know it was the precious tool of the scientists and this uniqueness was also far you know believed to be one that was again sacrosanct and one that could not be questioned why because after all scientists were trying to give us the truth. Then there was an infallibility 
about, about science and monism, there was an observation, uh, there was an understanding uh, or of observation as being theory independent, okay? that theory would not color uh, empirical observations of scientists. Right? And uh, the facts that were given by scientists were also claimed at least to be value neutral under a positivist framework. In that sense, the narrative therefore, that comes to us of science is one that is progressive and one that is linear. The belief within this framework is this, that science gets better and better you know or with time science is progressive in the sense that knowledge grows progressively almost in a linear fashion okay so which mean meant that yesterday's science you know uh, cannot be better than today's science so you see this was uh, this kind of thinking about science which we called uh, not simply science of course even other domain social sciences we we call positivism uh, and a sort of you know radical positivism was what um, propelled the study of social you know the social study of science and technology before this we did have uh, since the greek times we did have you know the 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 philosophy of science philosophy of science being a very important part so much so that many do not want to sort of uh, or want to demarcate two separate areas of philosophy of science and sociology of science. Okay? Now, together if you, look, we, if you look at it in a liberal sense, together the philosophy of science, uh, the sociology of science and the cultural studies um, are, you know, exploration of science form a very important form, a, a very powerful domain in critiquing of both axioms and postulates in science of, you know, as it said, you know, mentioned your infallibility as far as science is concerned, and uh, cultural studies. You could, you know, very safely say is um, the latest entry into this critical enterprise. Right. One of the first, uh, one of the first, you could say, uh, premises okay, or key premises in this way of looking at science and technology that is uh, the cultural way of looking at science and technology is that a science is socially determined and b science is culturally specific. Okay? Now, if many would not agree with such a postulate how can science be socially determined, but so we shall see in a while for example, taking you know taking the example of Newton's Principia, we shall see how science is also socially determined. Science is also culturally, culturally specific in the sense that science also partakes of the signifying practices that are available or that are so, sort of in currency. The science and the meanings that are in general currency in general culture. Okay. Now, if we have to look specifically or if you ask me what does cultural studies specifically look at as far as science and technology are concerned. A is in the maybe three different ways. Okay. A we see science itself as a culture. Okay. We see science now if culture is defined as a way of life as we saw in our you know initial lectures if culture is defined as a way of life then science and and the scientists okay uh, are said to be also in a way of life so science or doing science becomes a way of life with its own practices with its own codes and meanings with its own vanguards so to speak and its own watchdogs right so as we found a uh, science as culture is the first way of looking at science by cultural studies. Second, science and technology uh, or techno science, which many people use the word techno science today, okay, saying that science and technology can really not be separated. So, science and technology or techno science is seen as also shaping culture, that is the second way of looking at um, science and technology from a cultural studies perspective. And 
science and culture okay third science and culture are also seen as creating cultures of science right now for um, for uh, scholars for instance like bruno latour and others uh, this is for them most important okay the cultures of science now by cultures of science we do not mean only the practices of scientists we certainly also do not mean only the laboratory life what we mean is the system of codes and the way scientific statements are encoded and the way in the way scientists and um, students are taught to decode those signs okay uh, there are also how diagrams graphs um, which are not in you know in language right mathematical equations how they also are brought in in the enterprise of science okay so the cultures of science would be would range from the epistemological right down to at the actual um, effect that science has on on society okay so now you are aware that if uh, if uh, you are asked uh, what are the you know aspects the key aspects uh, that are taken up in a cultural studies understanding of science then we would say that these are a science as culture science and technology as shaping culture and the cultures that are uh, you know um, that are um, established by scientific practices fine as i said a while ago we would be looking at an example uh, of how you know uh, science impacts culture how science is socially determined how it is culturally specific now this was given to us by a russian uh, scholar named boris hessen okay hessen talks about newton's principia and many of us would simply look at newton's principia in a you know in in the way science was conceived of earlier at least by the majority of people as value neutral okay science as sort of you know um, isolated from all social and cultural processes right um, hessen on the other hand says that newton's principia apart from uh, being a scientific and mathematical text okay it was related to if you look at it from the point of view of uh, being affected by um, you know by socio political events by affected um, affected by the sort of the what we call the zeitgeist in german the zeitgeist or the spirit of the age then he says that we have also to look at newton's principia as serving the interests of british mercantile capitalism okay how it was seen as both emanating from okay this is important you know this is seen as both emanating from and contributing to issues and facilities of transportation of communication and of the military right of british mercantile capitalism so there are um, there are already available many um, explorations social cultural explorations for instance of galileo and his times okay of einstein of quantum mechanics etc from a cultural studies perspective right uh, i can give you a second example here when you talk about colonial science on the first example in the first example we so we um, were given the uh, the example uh, by boris yesen of newton's principia in this we also look at how colonial science okay because of post colonialism because of post colonial colonial theory philosophy and methodology okay today we we can look back and talk about colonial science at least as it was given to us in our country okay as deeply uh, as not something that was again value neutral as not something um, you know uh, which was sort of untouched right by the by the bigger and the grander um, framework of colonialism and uh, what it stood for okay so colonial science intersects interfaces with issues of race with issues of class of gender and nation 
and in India perhaps even caste, right? And of course, with the broader under, you know, understanding of what colonial knowledge was all, all about, okay? How, how for instance, the natives were, um, you know, considered in the colonial setup, right? So, you have, we have two examples here of how, um, you know, science and technology are both socially determined and culturally specific. So, the origins of cultural studies, you know, as a domain itself, it is interesting, okay, how it is related. Now, we, or we have always spoken of cultural studies as have, you know, as something that was, um, something that, you know, came about with the establishment of the Birmingham Center for Cultural Studies, okay, with, with um, very important scholars like Raymond Williams, Richard Hoggard and then Stuart Hall. Um, many of these directors of, you know, of um, the Birmingham Center for uh, Cultural Studies. But if we look at it from an epistemological standpoint, right, this is what we also have to acknowledge and it really ties in and helps us understand, uh, you know, uh, why cultural studies is important, the way cultural studies came about, you know, as a reaction to something. So, what was cultural studies a reaction against? Okay, among other things that it was a reaction against, um, against the racial domination, that it was a, you know, a reaction against scholars who refused to understand the politics of difference. Uh, feminism being also a very important contributor to cultural studies and of course, um, you know, structuralism, uh, particularly as, as we understand semiological criticism in the decoding, encoding and decoding of science. These uh, are the two important also additional important and as I, as I mentioned earlier uh, epistemologically these are very important. Why? Because cultural studies is often you know you know that cultural studies is um, you know among all other domains um, is akin to sociology. So much so that many say that there is no need okay for uh, cultural studies because sociology uh, kind of embraces okay, uh, many of the areas that are discussed under cultural studies. Now, uh, obviously cultural studies as a domain has driven, uh, has uh, you know made all attempts to carve out its own niche to say that no, we are a different domain altogether, we may be akin you know, because if you remember the first lecture of us or second lecture in this series. Okay, we had talked about, we have discussed the sheer, you know, interdisciplinary um, in, uh, character or nature of cultural studies and we had said that many even call it a post disciplinary um, enterprise, right. So, in that sense, okay, um, we could say that it is, it is quite legitimate for cultural studies to, if not to borrow then to carry on or to extend some of the domains of study and exploration that have been there hitherto in areas, more established areas like sociology or anthropology. Okay. So, it is called, let us look at this slide please, it is called often an insurgent sociology, okay. uh, that is um, a domain that rebelled against a particular way of looking at society which was called the functionalist way, okay. to see the different parts of society. Uh, to see different institutions um, of society like say family, like education. To uh, when we look at these simply in their uh, in the functions okay, as uh, the functions that they perform, okay, there is uh, an additional or maybe you could say a concurrent tendency right, to look at um, uh, you know these very functions as given things that are already given th with things without which you you know you cannot carry on. So, if certain institutions have served purposes in the past then these are institutions that are almost naturalized. So, cultural studies because it is politically driven, because it looks at issues of power and the politics of difference okay, uh, sort of rebelled against this very notion of functionalism. This notion of functionalism is also positivist in its epistemology. Um, 
you know, making in that sense, or also showing that if science is value neutral, then those things which have been functional in society can also perhaps be value neutral. This is what, or this was one of the motivations among others, okay, um, for many scholars moving into, now many scholars moving from literature for instance to cultural studies, many people, uh, scholars moving from uh, sociology, anthropology to cultural studies. One of the reasons could have may be, it is not to say that there is no dissent, uh, there is no critiquing okay, in these more established domains, but um, you know the critique is far more radical, the critique is far more strong okay, as far as these domains are concerned. Second, cultural studies also came about as a critique of instrumental rationality. Now, instrumental rationality is uh, you know different from critical rationality. Okay. We call um, we term, uh, term areas or methodologies like Marxism for instance, uh, we label them critical rationality. Why? Because they are essentially scientific, they are essentially rational in their approach, yet they are not instrumental. Okay. Rationality becomes instrumental when there is a sort of a technological scientific uh, domination, when there is a strong bureaucracy that is again based on technological uh, and scientific uh, domination. Okay. So, cultural studies came about as a critique of instrumental rationality. It is not to say that Marxism Okay, did not critique instrumental rationality. Okay, in fact, uh, Marxism continued okay, as a critique of instrumental rationality and you are aware that one of uh, you know, the most important sources of inspiration for cultural studies has been, you know, has in Marxism, we know that many scholars for instance in cultural materialism as given to us. Uh, by or, or you know the exemplars here here being um, scholars like Raymond Williams and Richard Hoggart. Okay, so uh, one of the uh, one of the key inspirational forces or methodologies, epistemologies, if you will. Okay, has been uh, the critique of an instrumental sort of rationality. Okay, so to sum it up, really. Cultural studies is seen as as um, uh, originating apart from all other uh, you know all other reasons also seen as originating from a dissent or a sharp criticism of instrumental rationality and a functionalist uh, sociology and they saw the roots of functionalist sociology and instrumental rationality this is very important okay in positivistic science. Okay. in positivism. Positivism was therefore, held to uh, you know um, was held to be uh, a methodology or an epistemology that was um, that was responsible for so, uh, so many um, so many of the problems for instance even colonialism was tied to a positivistic science. Okay. Therefore, the Again, to move on, uh, and to and if cultural studies looks at the particular, if cultural studies is interested uh, and rightly so in the micro levels, okay, universals is something that comes into sharp criticism or critique from a cultural studies a methodology or a cultural studies critiquing of science and technology. Okay, so what are the questions that we may ask? Okay, after scholars. Uh, you know, uh, scholars in um, science, technology, and cultural studies. So, some of the important questions that we may ask are: What social, cultural? Okay, please look at the slide. What social, cultural, and material conditions make the universal in science possible? Okay. So, again, universals in science are not viewed as we said before as sort of antiseptically quarantined if I may use the word from society, from social, cultural and material conditions. The universal itself is dependent on and takes on its nature from the material conditions of the production of science and technology. Okay. 
Then the second question, how do particulars become universals? Okay. The cultural studies investigation of science as in other domains as we know we have talked about this before that it is interested in the particular and this you know the sort of if I may use the word upgradation from the particular to the universal is in cultural studies, studies viewed with a lot of suspicion. You will agree that cultural studies is perhaps uh, you know we may safely say the domain that allows for you know a great deal of provisionality of knowledge. Okay. It is very it has a very sharp uh, you know critical eye as far as universals are concerned. Okay. In, um, lec in lectures uh, I think 3 to 5 when we uh, in module 1 when we are talking about science and the scientific the contribution of science of biology to cultural studies and certain universals you recall that there were certain universals that were give you know um, that were forwarded by scholars like David Buss for instance, for instance made preference uh, predator avoidance okay, um, language emotions all these were seen as universals, but and these were come then came from science, but the cultural studies investigation would again even question these so called you know established universals of human beings. Next you remember we recall that representation is a key concept in cultural studies we have already devoted two lectures to representation and therefore, cultural studies of the universal uh, not only in science in this case not only uh, scientific universals, but uh, you know, but also universals in the social sciences okay, are interrogated if we may use the word by questioning the very strategies of representation. How is a, a so called universal fact represented right, um, how, how is now uh, how does it come about in, in the in the first place. We are now going going you know after a little while we are going to look at you know uh, scholars who have said that equations, diagrams, graphs and the written word in science are different media and they, they are different strategies of representation right. And uh, if these media are heterogeneous then, then uh, there is a need to look at how they finally coalesce together to give a certain universal right. Okay, so, what is uh, uh, we move on to the fourth point which goes like this, what are the mechanisms by which the universal is given authority. So, after looking at the strategies, okay, after look, uh, uh, exploring the strategies of representation of the universal, then we also know that, that the universal is sort of legitimized, right. The universal uh, you know is given authority. Now, cultural studies would look at this, how is a scientific universal, okay what are the mechanisms by which these universals are given authority, these uh, universals are, are given credulity okay? and if, uh, you know eventually they are taught um, they become part of canonized education right. And finally, uh, and not the least because this is I think uh, maybe as far as cultural studies proper is concerned could be the most important point here. The last point to what use is the universal put? Okay. We have um, we have a universal, we have represented it with certain strategies of representation okay, by some social mechanisms and pedagogical mechanisms. We have made the universal uh, canonized, we have canonized the universal and we have given it authority right. So, finally, what you know this authority and power that the universal has right, um, to what uses are it put, uh, what uses are these universe are they put sorry are these universals put. Okay. So, if you uh, if Nazi science for instance in the time of Hitler um, gave some universals okay, uh, some universals regarding a certain races okay, as being uh, you know uh, superior to other races okay then we will have to we shall have to see um, we shall have to see uh, how 
how those universes were created, what went into, what was the kind of science being practiced in the times of Nazism okay, that would give rise to uh, an idea of the ideal or the most superior among all uh, human beings, the most superior race which would lead also to the extermination of some races okay, or some peoples in the, in the world. Now, um, the moment I say Nazi science and the cultural exploration of Nazi science, it is easy perhaps for you to, uh, you know, to, to accept it. Why? Because you knew that the, uh, you know, the terrible excesses okay, of Nazism were so wrong, uh, were, were uh, so very unacceptable. Okay. Uh, what is more difficult is, you know, to uh, as scientists, you are scientists and technologists, what is more difficult is to be self reflexive and to, you know, to look at your own work as also socially determined or also culturally determined and also as this last point put, uh, point here, uh, being put to certain uses, right. Uh, among, you know, I would say among, uh, not if not all, among most of the domains that you have studied so far and you are going to study in cultural studies, in this course in cultural studies, what, sh what should be of most um, interest and use to you, okay, is the cultural studies investigation into science and technology. So, so far what have we found? We have found um, that like STS or uh, you know science technology and society studies, also um, STC or science technology and cultural studies okay, looks at science and technology or, uh, or techno science okay, as culturally determined, culturally conditioned, um, socially determined, um, having strategies of representation, okay, um, there being mechanisms of giving authority and power to uh, you know to science and technology and particularly to universals, so much so that the so called universals are seen to be infallible okay, and value neutral. Right? And of course, you also have to see to what uses are these you know science and technology products uh, put. So, these are essentially uh, you know the key uh, focus areas of cultural studies investigation into science and technology. Right. Therefore, they come up with an in, in, in important proposition like this, cultural studies says that scientific reason to by which you know or, or about which we have many of us have an you know uh, unfailing trust right, which is um, in many ways a given to all of us is also now you may find this a little difficult to uh, difficult to accept, but when we say that scientific reason is also a cultural belief, right? Uh, many would even be more radical and go on to call it a myth, right? But if it is a cultural belief, it means this. Uh, it doesn't mean now. This is very important. Many would like, you know, so so to speak, to throw the baby out with the bathwater and say that oh, scientific reason is just a belief, like many other things. For instance, it is just a myth. But when we say that scientific reason is a cultural belief, what we mean is it is culturally and socially determined. Okay? And this is something that you know increasingly even many scientists right, are beginning to explore. There are these areas, these interfaces between science and philosophy, between science and sociology, between science and anthropology and science and, um, and, science and cultural studies. There are many scientists as well as philosophers, okay, there are also people from literature who are working in the interfaces you know, between science and uh, respectively all these other domains. Now, as far as the construction of identity is concerned, you know that identi identity and subjectivity are again two like representation, uh, two very important concepts, they are they form the key concepts among other concepts in cultural studies and cultural studies exploration of uh, science and technology also points to the fact that issues of identity and 
subjectivity of ourselves as human beings is also tied to science and technology. For instance, if we ask a question like this, what is it to be a human being? Okay? Now, there are of course, many ways of defining what a human being is, is but from the point of view uh, of science and technology and also to a large extent, right? unless one is arguing from a religious point of view. Right? The, from a large extent, the human being is understood increasingly in terms or in the discourse of genetics, in the discourse of general science and technology and, and of course, importantly in the discourse of the medical sciences. Okay? So, what is it to be a human being? What are our subjectivities and identities? How they are carved out? Uh, these are also, these answers are increasingly being sought in these definitions are sought in genetics, medical sciences and science and technology. Right? Um, this lecture would not really be complete if we did not bring in you know two very important philosophers of science okay, um, who, whose work has contributed not only to uh, the philosophy of science, but also to you know um, to social studies of science and technology and to cultural studies of science and technology in the sense that they were um, you know they, they, their work was very important because they, they uh, tried to shed light on science as an enterprise okay? uh, so on the epistemology of science on the methodology of science okay? and interestingly both Popper and Kuhn again were so different in their formulations. Okay? Now, whereas um, for instance, if what was the what was the way of you know the traditional way of looking at science? You remember just a few slides ago we had we found that the traditional way, the positivistic, right? The positivistic way of looking at science or positivistic science considered science as progressive, as linear. Okay, considered or uh, you know uh, science as uh, sort of. Uh, science is growing in uh, you know in, in a way in which each new thing was um, you know as a given better than the previous finding. Popper, Karl Popper as a philosophy of a philosopher of science talked about falsification as the method okay, of the narrative of science or the method of scientific progress and he says that uh, it science does not happen by convergence, but it happens by divergence. He says that you know there has to be a falsification, your theory would have to be falsifiable in order to be deemed a science at all. Now, many find this a little paradoxical, if it is falsifiable, right, then how is it science? Okay? But Popper would say that that is in the very nature of science and by doing this by the falsifiability test, he was performing a very important or making a very important contribution, you know particularly in when we, when we talk about science and religion, okay, when we try and differentiate science and religion, uh, this helps us a lot. Okay. If you look at religion, okay, religion cannot be falsified, you either believe in it okay, or you do not. You are either a believer or you are not a believer or in some cases you are an agnostic that which is something in between. Okay. But because religion is not falsifiable, it is not scientific and many who do not believe in religion would then go on to say that because religion is not falsifiable and because therefore it is not science, therefore religion cannot be knowledge. Okay. Religion that there is a difference between knowledge and religion uh, sorry between yes between uh, knowledge and belief sorry between knowledge and belief and for something to be knowledge you have to understand in the first place as cultural studies would be quick to show you would understand that it has definitely it has to be provisional in nature and it has to be falsifiable now we come to a very important point just because knowledge is provisional okay just because science is falsifiable does not mean that it does not work. Right? There is a difference, we agree 
you know we agreed to believe or to accept the fact that science is falsifiable according to Karl Popper uh, and that that uh, you know its trajectory is a divergent one right. We agree that science and other forms of knowledge are provisional, but we also agree at the same time that that is the best we have okay. something that is put to the test and something that is reliable is something that works right. On the other hand religion because it cannot be put to the test the belief in God uh, is something that you, you either have or you do not have you cannot put it to the test do you follow okay. In that case many would say that it would also it would not uh, you know um, not be knowledge in the first place. The other important philosopher as you saw was Thomas Kuhn according to which according sorry according to whom uh, science progress by paradigm shifts okay. and if Popper was uh, Popper talked about divergent the trajectory being divergent of science Kuhn uh, referred to um, the trajectory of science being a convergent one right and um, he explained you know the uh, the journey of science okay not simply as a you know as a linear uh, progressive one where yesterday science is better you know what was not better than today's science uh, like popper whose falsification theory uh, uh, you know made us question this whole traditional uh, you know linear way of looking progressive way of looking at science thomas kuhn's paradigm shift also showed that there was this you know that the journey of science was punctuated by if I may use the word punctuated by these very important shifts. For instance, if I give you an example Newtonian mechanics would be a paradigm ok. Um, the next important paradigm would be um, Einstein and the theory of relativity after which if we are to locate this and we would have to say that it is a convergent um, you know Kuhn believed in the in the convergent trajectory of science ok. So, we found here that Popper and Kuhn even though they belong to or they are important in in questioning the positivist ok the positivist uh, uh, you know understanding of science and they are appropriated by scholars in um, uh, science and technology and society studies the cultural studies um, investigation of science is deeply indebted to the work, work of Karl uh, Popper and Thomas Kuhn. Next there is also what is called today the critique of big science ok. The critique of big science and what is big science? Big science is uh, you know um, big science refers to a, a huge or mega project in science right, um, where there are you know there are scientists that, that uh, who belong to different parts of the world who take up segments of the project and um, you know the, the question here is the testimony being given by people so far flung in different parts of the world ok and their way of knowing and finally contributing to the mega project. Cultural studies or the critique of big science would look at the gaps therein ok. There is a trust of course, but they would say that this very trust which was the hallmark of science so far ok is something that is critique right. So, we have mega projects um, in science international projects in science uh, whose the gaps of knowledge and even as people contribute the interstices so to speak in them are not uh, considered. So, let us um, look at a few questions here. For instance, if you get a question like delineate the scope of cultural studies of science and technology, you would uh, answer in the following way you would say that uh, the study the cultural studies investigation of science and technology um, may be studied under three broad domains and these are science as culture ok which lead us to talk about the cultures of science. Now, again as I said the cultures of science are we do not mean scientific cultures scientific only scientific spirit ok. What we also mean are you know as we understand culture in cultural studies culture as a way of life A and B the, the science and the you know the codes 
the encoding of codes in science. Uh, for instance, as I said, how equations and signs written out uh, in language, diagrams, right? This is what we have been through: diagrams, uh, then uh, graphs, okay, and uh, you know what we what is called the activity operational, right? How these all come in together. So there is also a sort of you could say a linguistic, if I may use the word. Okay, a linguistic exploration of science. Finally, science and technology and the way it has shaped culture. Now, the way it has shaped culture also include, sorry, includes issues of identity and subjectivity. Okay, how identity and subjectivity are in human beings are created. For instance, the moment you explain and define the human being as uh, in from the point of view of genetics, from the point of view of the medical sciences, okay, from, the, from the point of view of technology, then you are building a subjectivity uh, and an identity, which is increasingly uh, you know, informed by the findings of science and technology. Why are people increasingly doing this? People do this um, or have a propensity towards doing this. Why? Because Science is shown to be value neutral. Okay, science is shown, uh, you know, to be isolated findings uh, which are not related, uh, you know, to or which, are, which cannot be conditioned by science. By but in the case of Newton, for instance, his Principia, uh, we found that how it contributed to British mercantile capitalism and in the same at the same time was informed by it. Right. Finally, last question, how does techno science mediate subjectivity? I said techno science mediate subjectivity. If you ask the question what is it to be a human being, increasingly answers are coming from the medical sciences, uh, from general science and technology and from genetics. So, um, you know, as with many um, lectures and as with many uh, on many occasions, well, uh, we have uh, again just been able to unpack science and technology studies. My hope is many of you would go on to read important books in science and technologies. I hope that this lecture has been able to motivate you to look at your own work as scientists and technologies to ask you know to, to boldly accept facts that science is not value neutral, that it is deeply ensconced. Uh, if not determined uh, by society and culture. Thank you so much and uh, we shall meet in the ne next lecture.